welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. In the previous episode, we got our hero Bob, or Bill, or whoever he was, back from the moon after having acquired a considerable amount of science, 220-something, I believe, in spite of the fact that as I was reviewing the science uh, while still in flight, it added up to 315. Not exactly sure what that's all about, but we got the science anyway. And this trip, we have a modified version of the FLIX with Peyton e. Kerman, the one Kerbal in the hangar in there in the uh, astronaut complex that had a zero stupidity rating and a reasonable courage rating. So this should be a good flight. Now I am going to. Now I did also acquire the very basic bit of uh, MechJeb in uh, the uh, technology thing. I added the MechJeb mod and as you can see here at this le current level of technology that I have I only have these options available to me. I've created a flight stats... oh, I already had a flight stats window. How about that? Alright, I've got a flight stats window. I've got Smart ASS for some steering control which I may or may not use. I have not yet decided. We'll see how things go. But it's available. In the meantime, Patney Kerman is headed for the moon. So, SAS on. Throttle it up. And note that SmartAss is turned off. And let us go. A bit shaky on the liftoff. Has something broken? Winglet damaged by engine exhaust. All right. Let's get this in, engaged. 90. Okay. Hold. Go to 90 degrees. If you can. I don't think you can. Uh, we still have a pilot on board, and we can't shut those SRBs off cut main engines. Jettison everything. And deploy parachutes. Get our pilot back. Oh, wait a minute. Please don't tell me that our pilot was killed. I don't see him down here in the corner anymore, so... That's why I'm thinking maybe he... Oh, no. Our best pilot was killed. I'm tempted to call this a computer simulation, but it feels too much like a cheat, so I won't. In the meanwhile, it's back to the vehicle assembly building to see if we can fix this mess. All right, here we are back on the launch pad. We've got Durfrey Kerman on this flight which uh, he was a pretty good follow-up for the other guy, although it's unfortunate that we lost the guy with the most brains, and so on. Anyway, the changes I made was to A, I added more launch stability enhancers to support the boosters at liftoff, and I moved the AVR-8 winglets, which I hadn't realized it when I added the boosters, but they were directly under the boosters and therefore affected by engine exhaust. So, SAS on. Throttle it up and let's get this SOB to the moon. And let's go. I'm going to set this up for attitude control should it be necessary. Note that it is still turned off, however. Looks like I may need it. I'm going to try to fix my pitch a little bit. That's better. That's not better. Okay kind of lagging in this flight so far, so Smart ASS Control Assistance is very much appreciated. There's just enough lag because there's just enough parts that makes flying this thing somewhat difficult. Okay, we'll lose the SRBs first. Mm, I 
figures they're giving the ship a good extra boost for liftoff. Get things going really good here and ensure that this thing will get into orbit and who knows, perhaps deliver its capsule to the moon in a condition where it can land. Ready for SRB separation in just a couple of seconds. SRB separation. Appear to be flying good stable. Turn smart ass off. Turn SAS on. Looking good. Probably should have put lights on this thing. But that's okay. I plan to have any landings occur at daytime, so that won't be an issue. Accelerating nice and smooth like. Okay, that fuel tank is on the last part of that booster, so when it gets emptied, that's when we're staging. It'll give me an idea of when to expect it that way. Alright, passing through 10 kilometers, pitching over some more. attitude as we rocket into the curb and dawn. That could be a title for a movie, Curb and Dawn. Hopefully a lot better movie than Red Dawn. fuel tanks in this stage, so let's uh, see about getting pitched over, if I can hit the correct keys, just about here, so that we're aligned with prograde, so that when the stages fall away, they don't hit anything. with me, you gigantic whale of a pig. That's right, you heard it here, this is a whale pig. Or perhaps a pig whale, I'm not certain. Climbing through 25,000, we need to get pitched over just a little more, but not until the staging is completed. Which will happen right about now. Very good. Alright. Smart ASS, pitch it over to 55 degrees and get us rolled correctly. In 
fact, pitch to 45 degrees. Be ready to pitch to 30. We are climbing fast now. And going through the stage pretty quickly, too. Alright, pitching to 30 degrees. Cutting the thrust at 100 kilometers altitude. Switching down to 15 degrees now. Standing by for zero degrees, right, right on the horizon. This way we're working on our periapsis already. 91 kilometers altitude, accelerating and climbing. This version of the FLIX is doing very nice. Pitching to zero now. Cutting thrust because we are at 101 kilometers. All right, we have a nice wide orbital arc. Apoapsis is a minute and a half ahead of us. And let's go with some prograde to get an orbit established. Sixty-two, step it down a little bit, or step smaller. hundred and five by a hundred that looks good to me one of the things I like about smart ASS quick and easy lining up with maneuver nodes although this one isn't very far okay and we've only got three tanks of fuel in this uh, just a little less than three tanks of fuel in this lower stage which means that this will be most of the transfer stage, I think. But we're doing pretty good here. Burn coming up in just a few seconds at T minus 26. There we go, we're on the way. Turn that off, SAS to hold it. Otherwise, Smart, AS, smart ASS will uh, chase the maneuver node as the, as the burn gets down to the end. And that's not good for hitting your target. Okay, it looks like we'll be losing this lower stage just about in time for it to be able to guarantee to re-enter because its periapsis will still be negative. Yes, good. Stage that. Oh no. Oh no. This is unacceptable. Four engines and four fuel tanks just got jettisoned when that stage done. Which means I have to abort this mission. We will turn retrograde and instead of inserting into orbit, we will burn this thing out of orbit, land it, recover our pilot, and relaunch. And I will catch up with you when we're back at this point in the flight just about reaching into orbit so as to save a little bit of time and actually get this mission where it's supposed to go. Here we are with a replacement ship, its design flaw and the staging corrected, approaching the same point where the other one went bad, getting into orbit, and should just be about there very soon. 
aiming for a roughly 100 kilometer orbit. Right, that stage is done. Now it worked correctly. We didn't jettison those stages. I had my staging way wrong on that. But we're good to go. Almost in orbit. I still probably have a good half of this stage left. Maybe a little more. Which will be good. It can be it can serve as an orbital insertion stage, a transfer stage, for injection to the moon. Which is what it was intended for. Coming down to the last part of the burn. Throttling down so as not to overshoot. And cut. Very good. We got about roughly half of it left. That stage was uh, three tanks of fuel, and there's a tank and a half left. Good. Take a look at our delta V stats. There's 370 meters per second left there, and then the lander can finish the job. That looks good to me. All right. First, we get rid of this node. We'll close that and close this for the time being. I think I'm going to edit that one and delete that window since I already have this one. Okay, move it out of the way. Select the moon as target. 0.2 degrees out of alignment. I don't think that's very bad at all, honestly. I'm going to eyeball it here. It's kind of hard with the sun in the way, but you see the moon is here. I'm looking for approximately where the moon will come over the horizon. And it's going to be right there. Very close to right there. Okay, so we'll add in about 800 meters per second of prograde velocity. Take that back to 800. All right, now adjust our time by 100 seconds at a time. Does that help us any? No. Okay. Another 20 meters per second in prograde. Adjust our time backwards a little bit. Hmm. A little bit more delta V. Play with the time until we get a close approach. That's pretty high. A little bit more dV. 41, 41 kilometer periapsis at the moon using this launch node. This launch maneuver looks good to me. All right, so we'll flip over here. Get aligned with our node, and then we will time warp. And another thing that I did while we had it in the VAB, is I added some solar panels here. I've forgotten that I got those single-piece solar panels, so now we've got some solar panels on this thing. Set an alarm for our burn. And we'll be burning just a little bit less than one minute, so one minute is good. Okay. And time warp. And with any fortune, 
Durfrey Kerman will be the first Kerbal in this save to actually land on the moon. He'd take a sample and bring it back to prove that he'd been there for all those doubters. Close alarm. We're lined up and it's time to burn. We'll use up the last of the DV on this stage getting started. And then we'll finish the burn on the uh, descent engines of the lander. Turn that off. SAS hold it. T-45s on the lander are doing a nice job of finishing off the burn quickly. Alright, that's good right there. Somehow the moon got unset as target. So we'll fix that. We have an expected 11 kilometer periapsis at the moon. We'll probably want to bring that up a little bit when we get out there. But this is good. Let's just warp time forward until we're in the moon's sphere of influence. In fact, I'm going to set a quick alarm for that. So that it will cut time warp when we get close. And I will stop recording until we're on the other side of the influence change. Again, to prevent crashing. Alright, close alarm. I have a feeling that's wrong. And as the moon gets closer, we're going to find ourselves uh, approaching the moon. So I'm going to physics time warp ahead slowly. On the other hand, this is turning red, which means that's not a good idea. Okay, we have our encounter back. And now we're, oh, hey, we did that without crashing, and I forgot to stop recording. Oh, well. Periaps is 10 kilometers. You know what? I'm going to bring it up just a little bit. All right. Uh, a little bit of radial. One meter per second increments. I just want to bring the periapsis that's too high Thirty-two, twenty-five. 
27, 23. That'll be good enough. Line up with our maneuver node and burn that in 18 minutes. We'll set an alarm for it. We'll time warp to it. A measly 3 meters per second at this distance has a very good effect. Let's get out of physics time warp and do it for real here. Okay. Time warp a little bit more carefully because we're getting close and this is only three meters per second. We can get this right down to zero almost. Okay, good, right there. Moon periapsis now 22 kilometers and some change. Great. Burn at periapsis. And do a orbit insertion burn. Sixteen by twenty-seven. Okay, and I could have read that one from there. Yeah. All right. Line that up. Adam. Alarm for that. All right. Let's time warp down to the moon and burn into orbit. I'm hoping this will leave enough juice in the tanks for an actual landing attempt. We really do want to get some surface samples and bring them back. daylight side. Alright, I'm going to point it retrograde here and I'm going to try for a landing. Not sure how good of an idea it is, but we're going to try it. And just kind of going a little bit seat of the pants here. Surface info is up because we're going to need it soon. Alright, let's burn the periapsis down low. I want a landing site somewhere over here in the day side. In that crater would be actually good. Let's burn a little bit more. In the crater would be good, but the crater's going to rotate away, and I'd rather land in some of this flatter-looking area anyway. All right, we have 2940 meters per second in delta V remaining. And I'm going to switch this to surface mode. don't need that anymore for the time being. We just need our surface information, mainly the true altitude, 
and our vertical and horizontal velocities. We'll see if we can get a landing. Force roll just to keep it rolled in a direction that makes the controls make sense. Alright, let's try something really crazy here. Out this way, add a maneuver. should be right there enough braking to uh, kill our horizontal speed almost completely so that's what we're going to go for <coughs> okay aligned with the node when it gets time to burn, the node and the retrograde will pretty much be in the same place. And now I'm curious morbidly about the delta V stats. We have 933 meters per second remaining in this stage. Theoretically, that should be most of what we need for a landing. It will stop, the, it will kill all the orbital velocity. And that's a big part of landing. Normally I prefer my straight down landings. I'm trying this along the horizon, come in low and fast and kill it at the last minute thing. We'll see how that works out. Right, time warp ahead. I didn't set an alarm for that so I have to watch the time. need be, I can activate the center engine down here without jettisoning these so that we'll still have landing legs to land on. T-minus six seconds. Killing our horizontal velocity. putting this retrograde. We're four kilometers above the surface. We need it to hurry the hell up. Landing gear down. And let's start killing our remaining velocity. for a surface pitch of 90 degrees and 
hold that. Okay. Coming down. Looks like we're going to get away with this on a whisper of fuel. Unreasonably semi-flat surface even. At least that's what it looks like from here. Eight hundred and fifty meters to go. We're about to lose these four engines. Fifteen meters per second left in those. Now using the last engine. Very light touch on the throttle. Use just enough to slow us down. I know I still have a maneuver showing on the nav ball and frankly I don't have time to get rid of it. Just enough throttle to keep slowing us down some. 370 meters altitude and descending. Three hundred meters. Two hundred meters. One hundred and forty. Definite shadow, definite surface features. 80 meters, 70, 60, 50 meters, 40, 20, 12, 10, 9, cut, and we're down a little bit of a wobble there, but uh, we're good. We are so good. All right. We have 2,087 meters per second in delta V, which should nicely be enough for a liftoff and return to Kerbin. All right. So... Sigri Kerman, no, uh, Durfrey Kerman, Durfrey Kerman, excuse me, I was thinking of somebody else, has landed on the moon. Well, okay, here we go. Go report from the surface of the moon. 40 science from the moon's midlands. Let's keep that data. And let's just do it again. on all four good containers. Now by my math, that's 160 science right there. Mystery and the material bay. 100 science, so that's 260 science right there. And now, for the moment of truth, well, first let's get a crew report. There's 20 science. Whoop de doo. All right, Durfrey. EVA time. First thing we're going to do get an EVA report. From space just above? No. 
we will let go you see that's why I put that girder segment there he can land on it and from there he can jump up and grab the uh, hatch it's a little spacey but he can do it and then of course he derps his way to the ground get up on your feet boy And of course, he has to plant a flag. Okay. Site name first. First moon landing, plaque text. Eat your heart out, Sigri. Okay, let's get that EVA report from the surface. 32 science. All right. Take a surface sample. This ought to be oh good. 120 sample. 120 science for a surface sample. Keep that data. All right. All right. Yeah, you should have had your light on from the beginning, there, boy. Get out your pack. Let's see if we can get back on the ship without crashing or tipping it over. All right. Put the pack away and just jump up. Not that way, not that no no no. Derfree, you are a derp. Now get your derpy hide on that ship and get back aboard. Towards it, not away from it, ding back. Grab. All right. Board. Climb up. Board. All right. We got him aboard with his sample and his EVA report. All right. Now, let me just look at something real quick. Okay. We're well over the 30 minute mark here. So, we're going to let Durfrey here sit back and contemplate his situation, examine his samples, and maybe add an addendum or three to his report. And we'll pick up this flight next time. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. I'm out of here.